Today, I'm really excited. Uh, we have a whole new setup here at Everything Scuba Studios, and I'm really excited to share it with you and talk all about the world of underwater photography and videography. Welcome to Everything Scuba. <laughs> Hey guys, what is happening? Welcome back to Everything Scuba. I am Lyle. If you're a first time viewer to our channel, welcome and we're glad you found us. We are here talking about, well, everything related to the world of the sport that we love. And if you love it too, if you love scuba dive, dive into Everything Scuba by hitting that subscribe button down below, ring the notification bell. As my cohort Josh would say, tell your friends, tell your mama, share this with all the divers that you know. So today, as I said in the introduction, I'm really excited to, to bring this to you. Behind me here, if you have watched our show before, we got a whole new backdrop to our sat, and we're gonna get into that in a little bit. But first, I got a question for you guys. Why do you love to scuba dive? What is it about scuba diving that gives you something that you don't get in the rest of your life? Is it simply the ability to be underwater uh, alone with your thoughts, listening to yourself breathe? Uh, is it your adventures in uh, wreck diving or cave diving? Um, is it the ability to just be in a three-dimensional underwater environment in any position that you want to be neutrally buoyant? For me, the real passion that I have when it comes to scuba diving is documenting wildlife and the experiences that I have. And that means for me, underwater photography and videography is something that I just love to pursue. I love sharing it with other people, uh, especially non-divers that are always kind of blown away by what we divers get to see and do. So I'm interested in the technical aspects of how do I achieve a certain shot of a particular creature or environment. Um, and also just the ability to be in their presence, to see them in their own natural environment and see that behavior is uh, an honor. Um, and so uh, what we're gonna do is, right next to me, we introduced to you in our boat diving series the fact that I obtained a new mirrorless camera system uh, not too long ago. Uh, I've been shooting with a compact camera for many years, the Sea Life DC2000. Uh, really nice setup, uh, worked really well for me as a kind of an introductory tool to really learn the basics of underwater photography. In fact, many of the pictures that you'll see on the wall behind me were taken with that camera. Some were taken with this new camera. But what I found is when I stepped out of the compact world into a mirrorless or an SLR environment, it's quite confusing. There's a lot of choices to be made and a lot of things to think about in terms of the housing, the actual camera itself, um, the lighting involved, the strobes, the video lights, and how do you make all that work underwater? And so step by step, what we're going to do is we are gonna break down this entire system, both in terms of the equipment and how we put it together, how does each part work, and we're gonna then talk about the aspects of wide angle photography, macro photography, and the same as it comes to videography in terms of wide angle and macro world. Uh, I'm really excited because we're gonna bring you some experts in those particular areas that will join us here on Everything Scuba to share their knowledge and their experiences with you. So I hope that gets you excited. What we've done here with the backdrop of the set of Everything Scuba is create a large collage of some of my favorite photographs that I've taken over the years. Now we didn't just choose these photographs because they're just my favorites, we chose each one individually because each was obtained using a different technique, either using a different piece of equipment, a different camera, action compact mirrorless, or using different methods to light the subject and a different way for us to achieve that result. And so we wanted to highlight to you the different ways, the myriad ways, that we can obtain really good photographs underwater. And centrally positioned in the collage is one of my favorite quotes of all time from the father of modern scuba diving, uh, the great explorer and marine conservationist, Jacques Cousteau. So let's take a little tour and do a quick review of each photograph, what it represents, how did we obtain the photograph, and chat a little bit about it. The first picture that we're going to take a look at is a crown of thorns starfish. 
So uh, kind of a ominous looking creature. Uh, this actually uh, eats hard polyp, hard coral, and so kind of an invasive species, uh, but pretty amazing to look at. Uh, the reason I chose this picture is because I took it with a compact camera, so really nice definition um, on the uh, frame, but we used two external flashes. This was taken at about 40 to 50 feet, and we've done a show previously looking at what happens to color uh, as we descend in the water column. I'll drop a link up above for you guys to go check that out, but as we uh, show in that uh, video, we lose reds in about the first 20 to 30 feet of our descent. And so by introducing artificial light, we can reproduce that color at depth. Our second picture here, uh, taken with the exact same camera setup, uh, except in this case, we did not use flashes. This is a Caribbean reef octopus. He was tucked underneath a ledge. I love this picture because it looks like he's smiling, uh, the way he's got his tentacle tucked underneath his, uh, his eyes there. Um, and this was taken at about 20 feet with no external flash. And so we were able to reproduce color in natural sunlight and it was clear enough that it allowed us to do that. Um, this image has been blown up a little bit and so again, because of some of the limitations that we see with a compact camera, we're starting to see a little bit of fuzziness to uh, the image. And so again, we're gonna talk about comparisons between uh, the two different camera systems in terms of compact versus SLR or mirrorless SLR. Uh, cameras and the image quality that we can obtain. But again, I love this because it's a, a really smiley octopus. Next picture we'll take a look at is the head of, of a yellow head jawfish as he's peeking his, uh, his head out of his little nest in the, in the sand there. Um, this was taken with a compact camera, the DC2000, and I had a 10 times diopter uh, attached to that camera and using a single flash uh, only positioned further out over the top of the subject to, to light that up. Um, actually, I, I took this shot during uh, shooting uh, one of our Everything Scuba YouTube videos, uh, Zen and the Art of Solo Diving. Uh, I'll drop the link up above here. Uh, we also captured some great video of this, this guy. He was pretty nervous at first, uh, but eventually came out to play a little bit. Uh, and uh, I love yellowhead jawfish. Uh, but a couple things to point out again, uh, because of a diopter on a compact camera, we're kind of limiting that focal distance that we have. And also as we blow this image up because of the limitation in the size of the, the sensor in that camera, you know, we're starting to look just a little tiny bit fuzzy. And uh, as you get close up to the picture, not quite as well defined. This image here is uh, one of the newer uh, photographs that I've uh, taken. This was actually taken using the new uh, mirrorless uh, Olympus EPL-10 or Pen-10 camera system in a housing. This was actually a night dive uh, at Frederickstead Pier. You can actually see uh, a little portion of one of the cement columns at the pier, which is encrusted in coral. So we're picking up a little bit of the soft corals and the color from it, but primarily um, here we're using two external mini flashes uh, to light up the subject and uh, you know really what stands out to me is uh, the pattern of this guy's shell was uh, amazing. The coloration uh, really was brought out by the, the use of that external flash and he's, he's got a little uh, stowaway there, a little tiny remora fish that is uh, attached to his back. But using flashes at night and using those flashes at uh, different angles, as you can see, we're kind of uplighting uh, on this uh, subject and we're also hitting him from uh, the other side with the other flash as we spread them out. We can light up that subject, not bring forth a whole bunch of backscatter, which we'll talk about uh, in one of our photographs here. Uh, and then also leave a really nice, and being a, a night dive, it's really easy to leave a nice dark background to really highlight uh, the subject. There are ways to do that during the day, and the next picture I'll show you is how we do that. So we have another yellowhead jawfish in our collection. This time he's emerged out of his little hole in the sand, 
And this was taken not with a compact camera, this was taken with the Olympus EPL-10 mirrorless system. Um, there was a 60 millimeter macro lens attached to that. And interestingly, the lighting on this was very different than any of the photographs that I've shown you so far. You can see how dark and black the background is here. It really highlights uh, the fish itself. Uh, I showed you a previous picture of a turtle that we took at Frederickstead Pier. That was on a night dive, and so it's a whole lot easier to light up your subject and have a nice black background at night, but this was taken in the middle of the day. So how do we achieve that effect? Well, in this instance, I use something called an optical snoot. This is an optical snoot that actually attaches uh, to my uh, backscatter mini uh, flash. And we will have a, a whole show looking at the use of a snoot and how we can use it to concentrate light in a particular area, allowing us to black out everything else and only concentrate on that little tiny macro critter. This image, also a newer image that I obtained using the new mirrorless camera that I have, uh, is of a Caribbean reef octopus. Uh, again, this was taken in about 20 feet of water um, using a wide angle lens. Got really close up to this, uh, this little guy. Um, and uh, we did not use any flashes on this. So again, we're able to kind of reproduce color because of depth but we have to white balance the camera properly. And again, we're gonna have a whole show talking about white balancing. How do we reproduce uh, colors underwater by co correctly white balancing uh, our camera system. But mostly, I love this picture because to me, the octopus is uh, just an unbelievable being. Uh, they've been around for hundreds of millions of years and the ability that they have to not only change color, but change texture and blend into their environment. Uh, I've learned if I see an octopus on a dive to never take my eyes off of it uh, because it can make itself look like almost anything. So we have a wide angle picture here. This was actually a wide angle shot uh, taken using the DC2000 uh, camera uh, in its housing with a wet wide angle lens attached. The things to, the reason I chose this picture is because it highlights several things. Um, I like it because this as a diver is how we would see this at 80 feet. So this is uh, my wife in front of a uh, rack of an old tugboat that's encrusted in coral. Um, at 80 feet, we lose a lot of color. And so there are some pictures that I actually like because this is how I saw it in real life. And uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, also, even if I wanted to, I am so far away from, from uh, both the uh, diver and from the boat itself that um, the world's strongest strobes really aren't going to light this up. Uh, we need to understand that the light will only travel so far underwater. And after that, we have to use other mechanisms to be able to create light and get the image correctly. This topmost picture is a picture that was taken in the Sea of Cortez near an area called Cabo Pomo. Uh, if you've ever had a chance to go there, uh, do it. It's an amazing place to dive. It's a marine reserve. It's more fish than I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, but you have to dive there with one of their sanctioned divers. And, this was our, our guide for the dive. Um, this was taken with uh, a DC2000 uh, compact camera, uh, obviously during the day, and naturally lit. So just natural sunlight. We were at probably about 20 to 30 feet. And he's far enough away from me that if I use strobes, it's not really gonna help me very much. Uh, you can still see some of the shadow of the diver below him uh, as it's naturally lit. We're also breaking a little bit of a rule when it comes to underwater photography. Generally, we don't want to take shots looking straight down on top of our subject. We want to be level with uh, or slightly below the subject. Maybe it makes for better composition, a better looking image. But I thought this was a pretty interesting image when I looked down and I saw the dive guide uh, crossing the sand. Um, other things I find interesting here is just the, uh, the fact that he's in a side mount configuration. Uh, and actually, if you haven't seen it already, my cohort Josh has started a series uh, talking all about side mount diving. I'll drop the link up above here if you want to go check that out. 
Uh, but we've got this really technical looking diver crossing the natural uh, flowing and rolling sand uh, on the bottom I thought was a really uh, cool way to, to uh, capture this image. And because of that I didn't feel like the color added anything to it. I like the contrast between the diver and the sand below. We have another black and white image just below that of the uh, dive guide from Cabo Pomo. Uh, this was also obtained in the Sea of Cortez, except this was obtained using an action camera, believe it or not. Um, shooting in 4K, I was able to extract one image from the camera. Uh, this was our dive guide and dive master, Selena. And uh, some people might look at this image and be like, oh my gosh, she's about to break the second rule of scuba diving, which is don't touch the animals. But it was quite the opposite here. Uh, we're diving with a, a, a group of uh, sea lions and juvenile sea lions, if you've never been in the water with them, are very much like young puppies. They want to mouth things, they want to check you out. And so she's actually trying to fend this guy off. But uh, in this, this image, uh, I think it looks great. It almost looks like she's reaching up for the uh, sea lion. In terms of the lighting here, this is natural lighting. We were maybe 15 to 20 feet below the surface. Uh, we were actually on a wall dive and so I was pointing the camera out away from the wall so behind her is just dark blue uh, ocean in the uh, uh, Sea of Cortez. And so uh, again, uh, the, the sunlight was behind me and did a great job of kind of highlighting and that sheen that's on the surface of the sea line really helps you know make it stand out. I also love some of the other details in this image in terms of the, the bubbles that the divers emitting as they travel upwards and the length of this photograph. Um, I, you know I actually added a little extra space on either side um, so that our eye is drawn more to the middle third of the picture. And again, we'll talk about uh, composition and how do we uh, put a picture together. But for me, overall, this uh, was surprising what I could get out of an action camera. This picture of a Caribbean uh, reef shark, I was about 100 feet down on the St. Croix wall, uh, looked up to see this guy passing overhead. It looks like a black and white photograph, but actually I did nothing to turn it into a black and white photograph. The reason it looks this way is because I was actually pointing the camera up and into the sun. So the sun was behind the shark and uh, so uh, sometimes uh, that type of uh, photograph uh, gives you a really dramatic effect uh, because it lets you silhouette the subject, uh, although uh, by altering your exposure settings you can still pick out details of the black tip uh, on its dorsal fin, uh, its mouth, its eyes, but it gives uh, kind of an interesting uh, perspective on that animal and also uh, I pulled it down towards the bottom third of the frame, again from a compositional perspective. Uh, for me it, it just seems interesting because we can see how much depth of water. You can make out some of the ripples, it's maybe hard for you to see through a camera, but you can still see some ripples of the water. So this picture here is a picture taken of a common anemone, uh, which doesn't look quite as commonly uh, like this. Uh, we took this using a DC2000 compact camera in the housing with no lens attachments except we did have a special lens cover because this was taken under fluoroscopic lighting. And we did a previous uh, episode talking about fluoroscopic uh, underwater videography and photography. Uh, if you haven't seen that, go check it out. I'll, I'll leave the link up above here. But under fluoroscopic lighting, blue lighting, certain organisms will fluoresce or bioluminescence will occur. And to enhance that, if you cover the camera lens with a yellow filter, it will block out the blue light and allow the rest of the light to transmit into the camera sensor. And you get this huge contrast and it's a really interesting looking uh, image. Uh, also, our friends over at uh, Blue Horizon Divers in Bermuda, Mark and Holly, we sent out a challenge to them. They put together a nice video on that as well. I'll drop the link to that up above also. So our next two images, we're going to do a little compare and contrast. So this is a, an image of a, a neuter branch that I obtained uh, when I was diving in uh, the Pacific side of Costa Rica. 
uh, with Rocket Frog Divers, uh, great group, uh, check them out if you're ever in that area. And uh, this was taken again with a DC2000 compact camera in a housing with a 10 times diopter attached. No tripod. Uh, yes, a single flash was used to highlight the subject. Um, and so still a nice image, pretty good clarity. But again, as we blow it up to this size, we can start to see that it's a little fuzzy around the edges. And uh, I remember distinctly when we saw this guy, we were in a little bit of current. And so, you know, obtaining good buoyancy and uh, stabilizing myself uh, without scraping along the bottom or holding on to something, uh, it was tricky to get this image. And so, again, in future episodes, we're going to talk about some of the diving skills that are necessary to be able to obtain an image without trashing the environment as you're doing so. But we're going to contrast this with the next image. So in contrast to that neuter branch that we took using the DC2000 with a 10 times diopter, uh, no tripod, I was uh, flailing in the current trying to remain stable to uh, take that picture. This was taken using the Olympus EPL10 with a 60 millimeter macro lens. Uh, a single uh, mini flash was attached and a tripod was also attached to the system. So I could set the camera down, frame my subject, and take the picture with true stability. And so uh, you can really see in this photograph how much more detail we can see when this is blown up. Um, you can you know, pick out his eyes, you can see the translucency of his body, the little hairs there on his arms here. So this is a banded coral shrimp. I took this picture in uh, Frederickstead Pier. But what this highlights really is not the equipment that we use to take it, but the, the technique to stabilize the camera. And so uh, one, we need to know how to dive and how to maintain our buoyancy uh, to take a really good picture. It drives me nuts to watch photographers lying on the ground or using something to dig into a piece of coral to hang on so that they can take a picture. Find a way to stabilize yourself either through a tripod system that you can set down by doing no harm to the environment or maintain your buoyancy. And last but by no means least, we chose to position this quote from the great Jacques Cousteau centrally in the backdrop. This is from a Time Magazine interview in 1960 when he declared, From birth, man carries the weight of gravity on his shoulders. He is bolted to the earth but man has only to sink beneath the surface and he is free. And if you're a scuba diver, you know exactly what that means. So next up guys, we are going to take a look at action camera, compact camera, mirrorless system, DSLR, what works for you within your budget, what works for you in the type of diving that you want to do, and what are the differences between those types of cameras. So click the link up above. Thank you.